I really do wish there was a truck segment that was practical, but not huge. Easy to park in the city, because I'm there a lot, and drives like an SUV, because I'm ready for some adventuring. Wait, maybe this Hyundai Santa Cruz can help me out. Let's take a look. The small truck segment has been hibernating, but Hyundai is looking to change that. Well, sort of, because they're not calling this a truck, no. This is dubbed a sport adventure vehicle, and it's looking to take on its direct competitor, the Ford Maverick, which Ford is calling a truck. The Santa Cruz rides on a platform derived from its sibling, the Tucson, and you may think it's a Tucson from the front end, but let me assure you it's not because it's been lengthened and widened to accommodate for the four foot bed and make sure there's enough interior space. That's important. Another important aspect of a truck, uh, sorry, SAV, is how it drives. Hyundai made it a point to merge the practicality of a truck with the driving dynamics of a compact SUV. The drive is comfortable and not too firm like the other trucks that need a payload to soften up the ride. Hyundai really nailed the comfort level for the Santa Cruz. The seats are comfortable and the cabin is quiet. In fact, it's easy to forget that you're driving an SAV with a four foot bed in the back. It does give you that crossover feel, which is great for road trips. But what's not so great is that huge C pillar in the back that can block your vision. That's a hefty price to pay to drive in style. Thankfully, Hyundai offers standard safety features such as forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection and lane keep assist. However, for a larger array of driver assist aids like blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic avoidance assist, and smart cruise control that's navigation based, you'd have to look in the higher trim levels. The Santa Cruz comes with two engine options. Base trims get a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder giving you 191 horsepower linked to an eight speed automatic transmission. Higher trims get a 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder pushing out 281 horsepower mated to an eight speed dual clutch transmission with paddle shifters, zippy. And here's some fuel economy numbers zipping across your screen. Noting that for some crazy reason, gas mileage on a naturally aspirated all wheel drive model is more efficient than that of the front wheel drive. Hmm. I'm driving the 2.5 liter turbo engine and it feels like more than adequate power for this small SAV. Now I gotta admit there is a bit of turbo lag, but after a beat, the power delivery is strong. And you have these paddle shifters, which is really handy when you're towing. As far as steering, it feels precise. Although me personally, I prefer my wheel with weightier efforts. I mean, I got the muscles for it. Might as well put them to use. Speaking of towing, a standard Santa Cruz can tow up to 3,500 pounds, and a properly equipped Santa Cruz is capable of towing up to 5,000 pounds. One thing to keep in mind is that the more powerful turbo engine only comes in all-wheel drive, but all-wheel drive can be added on the lower trims for an extra $1,500 if front-wheel drive just isn't enough. Now, don't expect to go rock crawling in this SAV, but just know that Hyundai's H-Track all-wheel drive system will get you to your adventure trail or your camping trip in style. And speaking of style, check out that stylish subscribe button next to the Kelly Blue Book icon. Why don't you go ahead and hit that? Sticking with the style motif, Hyundai decided to deal some bold styling cards with the Santa Cruz. Rather than using a rectangle or square, Hyundai derived its design inspiration from a triangle, sorry Elon, and with its futuristic look and wide stance, the Santa Cruz has road presence. The Santa Cruz definitely strays away from the styling of a traditional truck, and to be quite honest, I kind of dig it. Let us know what you think down in the comments, and play nice. Move to the profile and you'll notice a low raking A pillar and forward sweeping C pillar that give it a less boxy shape along with some Santa Cruz silhouette stamped wheel arch body cladding and 18 inch or 20 inch wheels like our limited trim here, this SAV looks adventure ready. And people planning on going on those adventures are probably gonna spend a lot of time back here, so let's take a look. Starting with the tail lights, this T-shape definitely strays away from that traditional truck design. And before we open it up, check out these integrated steps that you have to access the bed. When you open up the tailgate, it's dampened. Not only is it dampened, it's adjustable. Take this little clip off, hang it up here, 
and you can have it at an angle for whatever you need to store in here. So uh, putting this back down, super easy. The tonneau cover is available and factory fitted. So you know it fits this truck, SAV, whatever, just right. And it's adjustable. If you need it open halfway to have your bed exposed just a little bit, that's fine. Throw it all the way back and it stores right into that metal container. And as we see inside of the bed, we have a rail and cleat system lined around the bed with some heavy duty D-rings that are accessible right here for your tie downs and LED lighting so you can see what you're doing at nighttime. Open this up, you got storage on both sides. This side includes the 115 volt outlet. Speaking of storage, I got something pretty cool for you guys. Check this out. Underbed storage. This not only can fit a lot of ice, it can fit some Coca-Cola in there too. And it has a drain plug, so it goes right out. And I think that's pretty neat. You know what? For a four foot bed, this thing is pretty functional. There's also spots molded into the bed to create shelves for more storage and available bed accessories like extenders, mats, and nets to maximize functionality. That focus on functionality extends into the cabin as well. There's a manual rear window for more airflow, removable storage under the back seats, and a deep center console for storing your random adventure stuff. Before gearing up to go on your adventure, you wanna make sure that you actually fit in the Santa Cruz, and that's what I'm here for. Me being 6'4", let's see how I fit in the driver's seat. So hopping into the driver's position, feels like I got plenty of space. I can even scoot the seat back, it goes down, and this, there's a lot of headroom for me. A lot of leg space. Steering wheel is tilt telescopic, but let's scoot this seat up just a little bit from what I'm used to and hop in the back seat. And I'll show you why. Because if you're a tall guy sitting behind a tall guy in the Santa Cruz, yeah, there's not a lot of knee room, but there's plenty of headroom. The ceiling dips in despite having the sunroof and you got plenty of space right here. But if you're in a normal seating position, I'll scoot over and show you. Yeah, you got some space with plenty of headroom. Oh, and one other thing to show you. There's no center console to fold down. You know why? Because the cup holders are right here. And as you can see, no fountain drinks, only bottles. So if you do put a fountain drink in there, oh no, my Slurpee's everywhere. The interior of the Santa Cruz is filled with good tech as well. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come standard along with an 8 inch touchscreen. Coincidentally, the limited trim has a 10.25 inch touchscreen with navigation, but there's only wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's a bummer. There's also available wireless phone charging and a 10 inch digital gauge cluster. I really like how the screens are laid out in the Santa Cruz. The digital gauge cluster actually changes the graphics depending on which drive mode you're in, which is actually a cool little touch. And check this out. Your blind spot can pop up in the speedometer or the tachometer depending on which side it is. That's a neat feature for your safety. I have two gripes though. One gripe is a volume knob. There's no volume knob. It's just the touchpad and the piano black can get a lot of fingerprints. That's no bueno. And number two, it would be so good to have a cover over the digital gauge cluster because sometimes it can get a bit glary. Pricing for the Santa Cruz starts at just under $24,000, not including destination for the SE trim. And for added creature comforts and safety features like push button start, heated front seats, a power adjustable driver's seat with lumbar support, blind spot collision avoidance and rear cross traffic assist, consider stepping up to the SEL trim. Further premium options like roof side rails, a power sunroof, that integrated tonneau cover, 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster and wireless charging can be added as an activity package to the SEL trim for $3,270. However, they come standard on the SEL premium trim, which has the more powerful 2.5 liter turbo engine, along with LED head and tail lights and body colored door handles. And finally, the most loaded Santa Cruz Limited trim adds a dark chrome grille and tailgate handle, rear vents, which should be standard, dual USB outlets, that 10.25 inch touchscreen, leather ventilated front seats, heated steering wheel, 
Bose audio system and smart cruise control with stop and go. With little competition in the small truck segment, the Ford Maverick is really the only direct competitor with its longer four and a half foot bed, better fuel efficiency, and lower base price at just under 20 grand. However, the Santa Cruz tows more and has a stronger warranty. And if this segment seems too tiny for you, consider the Honda Ridgeline, which has a larger bed and more interior space, but only one engine option and a heftier base price. With the Santa Cruz's intriguing price, available features, and futuristic look, I'm pretty excited for the small truck segment, uh, SAV segment to come back. You know what? Whatever you want to call it. I think this is a great way to hop out of the office and into some adventure time. Savvy.